Good morning. Please stand and join along with us with our music today. We're starting off with We Will Dance. God's grace and peace to you as we join in worship at Sun Prairie United Methodist Church on this third Sunday in Lent. Welcome those gathered here in the sanctuary and those joining us online. My name is Pastor Claire Douglas and I'm the Associate Pastor of Faith Formation here at Sun Prairie United Methodist Church. As a reconciling congregation, we extend a wide welcome to all God's people as we worship together, grow in our faith, care for others, and as we serve God in our communities. We hope that you will know God's life-giving love in this time of worship. Your attendance is important to us. You received a card when you came in for recording your attendance, and you may drop that in the offering plate when you leave worship today. If you are joining us online, you may use the comment section on YouTube to let us know you are with us, or you may go to the worship page of our church website at sunprairieumc.org to register your attendance. If you're a guest today, we extend a warm welcome if you're a guest here in person, please stop by the Welcome Center if you have not already done so, so that we can greet you and get to know each other more. For those guests joining us online, please see who we are and the ministries we share together on our church website.
As we pour the baptismal water this morning, we are reminded that God invites us all to be present here at God's table. Whoever we are and whatever our journey, we are welcome in this place. May we remember our baptism and be thankful. Please stand and join along with us. My name is Pat Harper. Please join me in our call to worship. Come and find your place at the welcome table of God. Come and offer thanks and wonder for the bounties of God's love. When we are invited to come to the table, we see that love is more powerful than fear and mightier than hatred. So we pray that the love which God has poured out upon us is a love we offer to others. As we worship, may our hearts and souls be healed so that we may go out in grace-filled service. Amen. Our first scripture reading is Psalm 19, verses 7 through 14. The Lord's instruction is perfect reviving one's very being. The Lord's laws are faithful, making naive people wise. The Lord's regulations are right, gladdening the heart. The Lord's commands are pure, giving light to the eyes. Honoring the Lord is correct, lasting forever. The Lord's judgments are true. All of these are righteous. They are more desirable than gold, than tons of pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, even dripping off the honeycomb. No doubt about it, your servant is enlightened by them. There is great reward in keeping them. But can anyone know what they've accidentally done wrong? Clear me of any unknown sin and save your servant from willful sins. Don't let them rule me then I'll be completely blameless. I'll be innocent of great wrongdoing. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. A word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I, would like to, bleh, I would like to invite the children to come forward for a special moment with my friend Carrie Todal. Yes, come on down. I am so glad you are here. Otherwise, I was going to have to talk to all these other people sitting in the pews, so it's much more fun to talk to you two. And Pastor Claire is here, too. And here comes Mr. Wenzel. Do you have anything to put in there? That's okay. That's fine. Your gift is coming to visit with me for a little while. That's your gift. Well, I've been reading the Lenten folders or meditations that we get every day, and I got to thinking, tables. 
hmm, so my mind went back to the kitchen table that I used to sit in when I was about your age. I have two sisters. Connie, hi Connie, she's online. And my other sister, Wendy, is flying from Vietnam to Portland, Oregon today. So I can't even wave at her. That's no fun. But we always said a prayer. And one of the days, they had different kinds of prayers in our booklet. But they didn't have this one. So my sister, who's very talented, made this so that I could hang it in our kitchen, which was very small. Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the food we eat. Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you, God, for everything. You are great. Yes. So then I got to thinking, Jesus. And I learned at first service that Jesus had brothers. So can you imagine sitting around the dinner table with Jesus and his brothers? I'll bet they caused some interesting dinner times, don't you think, Pastor Claire? Yeah, especially if there were three or four of them. We don't know exactly how many, but... <clears throat> so I looked, I thought about our church. We now have tables, and look at, we've got people here, and Mr. Zerbel sat with me for a little bit, and then we have a table over here, and we have a table over there. We have tables in the uh, fellowship hall that we can sit and visit with friends about, but one of my favorite tables is the turquoise table that sits outside. It is so welcoming. And when we have summer and we go outside to have our services, people love sitting there. And it's going to be 70 today. So can you imagine if you go home and mom says, let's have brats outside. Do you have a picnic table? Yeah, we could even, you could even eat at the picnic table today. I'll bet Jesus likes a table like that, don't you think? Pretty purple, or purple, turquoise, I'm sorry. And we spent a whole Lent five years ago, Pastor Jenny told me, talking about a turquoise table. And that's why I think we have it out there now. It's so very special. So let's get in our prayer positions, and we'll say a prayer, and then we'll say our Lord's Prayer together. Dear Lord, thank you for all the tables and all the friends that sit around them. When we get to know people in our church, when we get to know people at restaurants, it's because of the table that we sit at. Thank you so much for Jesus and the prayers that we make when we sit around those tables. In your name we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for making children's time very special. Nothing left to give. 
or the shape that we were in. And just when all hope seemed lost, love opened the door for us. He said, come to the table. Come join the sinners who have been redeemed. Take your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. Come to the table. Come meet this motley crew of misfits. These liars and these thieves, there's no one unwelcome here. That sin and shame that you brought with you, you can leave it at the door, and then let mercy draw you near. Come to the table, come join the sinners who have been Take your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. Come to the table. Come to the table. To the thief and to the doubter, to the hero and the coward, to the prisoner and the soldier, to the young and to the older, all who hunger and who thirst, all the last and all the first, all the paupers and the princes, all who fail you've been forgiven, all who dream and all who suffer, all who loved and lost another, all the chained and all the free, all who follow, all who lead, anyone who's been sent down, all the lost you have been found, all who fabled right or wrong, to everyone who hears this song. the Gospels, Jesus shared meals with others. In a world where there is an upsurge of hate and division, and a growing uncertainty about what the future holds, God calls us to make space for all of God's children at the table. As we sit at the table together, we can learn more about each other and get to know the God who created us all even better. Our theme for this six-week season of Lent is Come to the Table. 
And each week in worship, we are looking at different tables that Jesus sat at or was at with a variety of different people, as recorded in the Gospel of Luke. And our story today is one that offers a scene that will be easy for you to imagine in your mind. It is a setting where Jesus has been invited to dinner at the home of a Pharisee on the Sabbath. And you may remember that Pharisees were experts in the Jewish law. And they were one of the most powerful religious and political parties of the day. They were very influential in the Jewish faith. And the scripture will say today, the gospel scripture will say, they were watching Jesus closely. And most likely they were watching Jesus closely because they wanted to entrap him. They wanted to make sure that they could destroy him. As you hear this scripture read, I invite you to get an image in your mind of focusing on watching Jesus closely. I'll be reading from the 14th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. I'll be reading verse 1 and then verses 7 to 14. And you may follow along with the scripture either on the screens or in the pew Bibles. Listen now to a word of God. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to share a meal in the home of one of the leaders of the Pharisees, they were watching him closely. When Jesus noticed how the guests sought out the best seats at the table, he told them a parable. When someone invites you to a wedding celebration, don't take your seat in the place of honor. Someone more highly regarded than you could have been invited by your host. The host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give your seat to this other person. Embarrassed, you will take your seat in the least important place. Instead, when you receive an invitation, go and sit in the least important place. When your host approaches you, he will say, friend, move up here to a better seat. Then you will be honored in the presence of all your fellow guests. All who lift themselves up will be brought low, and those who make themselves low will be lifted up. Then Jesus said to the person who had invited him, when you host a lunch or dinner, don't invite your friends, your brothers and sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they will invite you in return, and that will be your reward. Instead, when you give a banquet, invite the poor, crippled, lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they can't repay you. Instead, you will be repaid when the just are resurrected. A word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we open our hearts and minds to these words of Scripture and the proclaiming of your love, may we receive the blessings that you will bring to each one of us. And then may we take your love, your grace, and your welcome out with us into a waiting and needy world, knowing that you go with us as our strength, our rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, the late pastor, seminary professor, and storyteller, Fred Craddock, told us about a time when he was invited to preach at Riverside Church in New York City, which is this enormous church that has been a beacon of influence on the Upper West Side of the city for decades. And the sanctuary of Riverside Church seats over 2,000 people. Fred Craddock said that he felt honored to be asked by the pastor who was going to be out of town to preach at Riverside Church. And the pastor also invited him to stay at his modest apartment, which was just down the street from the church. Well, Fred told the story this way. He said, when I arrived, there was nothing in the refrigerator, but there was a note that said, if you usually eat breakfast on Sunday morning, you can go to the church where we have a meal for the homeless in our neighborhood. Well, I walked down the street early on Sunday morning and stood in line with maybe 100 people who were waiting to be served in the basement of the church. I talked to people that were in front of me and behind me and those who were across from me. Well, what put you in this situation? I asked. Well, one man said that he was addicted to alcohol. Another said he had lost his job and his house. And another said that he was trying to function with a mental illness with no health care. They were among the least, the last, and the left out of society. Then one of them asked me, what put you here? I was invited, I said. I didn't know what else to say. I didn't want to create any distance between us. So I just ate what they ate, and I talked with them. 
Then before going back to the apartment to get ready for church, I invited those that were around me to think about coming to church at 11 o'clock. Well, church time came, and I put on my robe with all my academic stripes and my liturgical colors. Then I stood up in this huge pulpit with hundreds and hundreds of people out there worshiping, an enormous choir, and a pipe organ that filled the front of the church. Then I saw my friends from breakfast in the back pew, and I introduced them to the congregation and invited them to come to the front. Then I thought to myself, I'm in the pulpit of Riverside Church in New York City. Who am I? I am a guest. I'm a guest of God, a guest of Christ, a guest of the church, and so are my new friends. We are all guests at the table. One of the things that I deeply appreciate about the United Methodist Church is our understanding and our belief of the open table. And when we think about that literally, we're talking about the communion table that is open, that's open to all. Each time we share communion, the invitation is given in the United, that in the United Methodist Church, we celebrate an open communion table, meaning that all that worship with us, whether we're in person or online, are invited to share in this meal of bread and juice. We understand that this is God's table and that Jesus is the host of this meal. It is a similar meal that Jesus ate with his disciples on the night before he was crucified and that he ate with other people at other tables. Our invitation to the open table reminds us that anyone who seeks to respond to Christ's love may come. You do not need to be United Methodist. You do not need to be a member of this church. You don't even need to be a person that proclaims to be a Christian. The table is open to all. All who seek to live a life of peace and love. Our Wednesday Lent study class this last week got talking about the open table. And one of our clergy participants in the study shared with us about how he heard and how he learned the invitation to the communion table back in the late 1950s and the early 1960s. It was an invitation that he said he used for probably the first 25 years of his ministry. A phrase in that invitation to the open table said, all people of the Christian faith are welcome at the table. Well, as the years went on, he realized that there was a problem with that phrase, because it was a contradiction of terms. The phrase said that the table is open, but only if you are a Christian. That the table is open, but only if you are a Christian. And he said he realized also that it's bad theology. That it, the statement presumes that faith is a prerequisite to God's grace, which is the exact opposite of how John Wesley shared about provenient grace which we've talked about often, meaning the grace that comes before. That provenient grace is this grace that comes before, before we even know who God is. The open table is where we are all welcome, regardless of difference, difference of any kind. We celebrate a table where there are no barriers. There are no barriers at this communion table. It is a table where we experience God's love for all people. God so loved the world that God gave. God so loved the world that God gave. And Jesus lived out that kind of love. Lived out that kind of love in all that he said and all that he did. Remember our gospel story <clears throat> begins by saying that Jesus was being watched closely. Watched closely by those that were at the meal. Well, Jesus was probably watching them closely also. And he noticed a discrepancy in the seating arrangements. So he told a story about humility and about welcome and about an invitation to come to the table that must have shocked and shamed his dinner guests who were overly concerned with their own importance when it came to taking a place for dinner. Jesus said, when you are invited to a gathering, do not sit in the most important place in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited and that you would have to give up your place. 
It's better to start off in the back and be invited to come up, come to a better seat. Well, this starting off in the back seats, it's lived out well in the church, don't you think? So perhaps I should invite those that are in the back pews today to come on up to the front. We have some good seats here at the tables. Or as Jesus put it in our gospel story today, friends, come on up to a better seat. The open, welcoming, invitational nature of our gospel story today is a lesson of what the kingdom of God looks like. Sometimes to emphasize the inclusiveness of God, we take the G out of kingdom to make the word kingdom. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is where all are invited to come to the table. We are all kin when it comes to coming to the table. The story that Jesus told is a lesson in humility, and it's a lesson in the wide welcome of the table. God's table invites us to pay attention. To pay attention to just how open the table really is. Who has a place at the table? Who has a place in our church, in our communities, in our country, and in our world? Who has a place at our tables? Can you picture a world where everyone is welcome? A world where everyone is welcome. If we go back to that phrase at the beginning of our gospel story today, they were watching Jesus closely and asked the question, what happens when we watch Jesus closely? What happens when we watch Jesus closely? What do we see? Do we see this wide welcome of Jesus? As we move through these weeks of Lent with our theme of come to the table, and as we continue to move through 2024 with our ministry focus of beyond our doors, who will we invite to come to the table? Who will we welcome? Inviting and offering an open table is practical day-to-day -day Christianity. It's day-to-day -day Christianity, and it's an attitude, and it's an invitation into a church. It's an attitude and invitation of showing others what this meal, what this communion meal, meal really means to us, and whose kingdom it is that we represent. When we invite, let's think about those folks that we know that are among the last and the least, and the left out in our communities. Maybe they're not literally poor, crippled, lame, and blind, but maybe spiritually. Maybe spiritually they fall into all those categories, and they're just waiting to be fed. They're just waiting to be invited. They're waiting to be welcomed, to come to the table. There is great hope in knowing that we don't have to search for a place at God's table. We do not have to search for a place at God's table. We are all invited to come to the table. So if it is God's table that we surround and God's kingdom that we proclaim, we will extend a wide welcome, a wide welcome to come to the table in the name and spirit of Jesus the Christ. May it be so for each of us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand and join along with us. Oh.
As we prepare ourselves to come to the table of God's grace, we also lift our prayers. We always remind you when we come to prayer that you may make a prayer request by going to our church website, and there's a prayer request button there that you can click, or you can reach out to the church office, and we'll make sure we lift your prayers in worship and send them out over our prayer chain. I do have several prayers to lift to you today. Prayers for the Shank family. Jerry Shank passed away this last week, and Jerry grew up in this church and is the brother of Jan Thompson and Joel Shank, that are members of our church. And a service to celebrate Jerry's life will be this coming Friday, March 8th. There'll be a visitation at 9 o'clock and a service at 11 o'clock. So we hold the Shank family in our prayers. Then prayers for Robin Talley. She'll be having knee surgery tomorrow, so we're praying that that surgery goes well and her recovery goes well. Jean Bass's brother passed away this last week, and so prayers for Jean's family and extended family during this time of loss. And then prayers for Jan Witcher. Uh, Jan is the mother of Tim and mother-in-law of Karen Witcher, and Jan is progressing through the end stages of dementia. And she also was a member of the Bashford United Methodist Church, so our prayers for the Witcher family. And then during the season of Lent, we have a prayer table out in our narthex, just outside the conference room window. And there are strips of purple cloth there with some cloth markers. And we're inviting you to write your prayers down there, to write a prayer of hope or a prayer that you're holding during this Lenten season. And then those strips of cloth are going to be woven together into a pyramid that we'll have on our communion table. Well, now let us prepare our hearts and minds for the sacrament of communion. Today we come together to the table, to God's table, where all are welcome. In the United Methodist Church, we believe in an open table, which means that you need not be a member of this church or of any church or be a Christian at all to come here. God invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. We will receive communion at the front of the sanctuary. Once the meal has been blessed, you will be invited to come forward. You may put out your hand and receive a piece of bread, and then take a small cup from the tray. You may eat and drink as you receive the elements. Gluten-free bread is available at the center station, and bowls are on the side of the sanctuary to collect the empty cups. As you return to your seat, if you would like anointing with oil, you may stop on either side of the sanctuary, where a pastor will be standing. 
Oil will be placed on your forehead in the sign of a cross, and a prayer will be shared with you. Anointing is a way of opening yourself to God for a particular place in your life or on behalf of somebody else. Let us join together in an attitude of prayer. It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his southering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Would the ushers please come forward? is fierce and the walls are crashing in and I've got no place to go surrounded by my foes yet not alone there's one thing I know that they don't know you prepare, you prepare a table and bless me in the presence of my enemies. You fill me till my cup overflows. You restore my soul. If not for you I would surrender to my fears and hope would surely slip away I find comfort knowing you are near 
ready to say, renew my strength, though you prepare a table for me, and bless me in the presence of my enemies, you fill me till my cup overflows. Restore my soul. I will lift up my eyes to where my help comes from. I know you hear my cries. You are my champion. Oh, you prepare a table for me. Bless me in the presence of my enemies. You fill me till my cup overflows. You restore my soul. I will lift up my eyes to where my help comes from. I know you hear my cries. You are my champion. Oh, you prepare a table for me and bless me in the presence of my enemies. You fill me till my cup overflows. You restore my you restore my soul. You restore my soul. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for inviting us to your table, a place where we celebrate and remember our connection with each other and with you. Help us as we go forward from this place to not only feel your wonderful invitation, but also to reach out an invitation to those around us so that your love may spread and your table may extend. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. In the United Methodist Church, we promise to support one another through our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. We celebrate today the many gifts that we give one another. In gratitude, we will have our offering plates at the door today as we leave worship. Or you can make your offering electronically by going to our church website. Or you may mail or bring your offering to the church. Each week in worship, we like to show you photos of where your gifts go towards. This week's we have photos from Ash Wednesday. In the morning, members of the SPUMC staff offered ashes and coffee to members of our community on the go. And in the evening, we celebrated Ash Wednesday together with the help of our confirmation class. Thank you for the ways that you support the ministries of our church and our communities. Let us join together in the doxology. join me in the affirmation of faith found on the screen and in your bulletin. We believe in God who creates, redeems, and gives life to the world and to the church. We believe in God who continues to touch our lives at the points of deepest need and highest aspiration, whose love is shown to us through Jesus the Christ. 
whose spirit moves among us like the wind. We believe God calls the church to come together as a faithful community, to witness by words and deeds of love, and to be sent forth as God's servants. We share God's good news with the world, confident in its power to make a difference in our world and in our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen. Each week we like to share a few ways that you can get involved in the life and ministry of our church. If you are not already receiving our Monday devotional word of the week or a weekly Thursday email that outlines what's happening in the life of this faith community, please reach out to the church office so that we can get you on the email list. Our monthly food drive will take place on Saturday, March 9th from 9 to 11 in the morning in our church parking lot and during our morning worship on Sunday, March 10th. Our donations in March will go to our neighborhood school, Northside Elementary. A list of current needs can be found on our church website and in our weekly Thursday email starting this week. We are looking for small treats or candy donations to fill over 9,000 Easter eggs for our community Easter egg hunt. You can drop off donations in Fellowship Hall or with me. We will be having a newcomer meeting for those interested in learning more about our church on Thursday, March 14th at 6.30 p.m. The meeting will last about an hour. This will be a time for you to get to know other people who are interested in learning about our church, as well as learn about how you can grow in your faith at SPUMC. Please RSVP to the church office by March 11th. Child care is available if requested by March 11th. And finally, join us for worship next Sunday as we continue our Lenten journeys at the table. We will worship either here in our church sanctuary or online at 8.30 and 10.45. I invite you to stand for our closing blessing. Now, as we leave worship, may the open table be the gift that we share with others as we share the wide, welcoming love of God, our creative God, the invitation to a wide welcome of God's grace and Christ's grace with us, and the sustaining presence of the Holy Spirit's strength in each day. And may we always have the courage to live as God's grateful people. Amen. Was